here from Blockstream. Welcome. everyone. Uh, so I'm Andrew Chow. I'm an uh, engineer at Blockstream and also a Bitcoin Core contributor, uh, working mostly on the Bitcoin Core wallet. So today I'm going to be talking about um, rethinking the wallet architecture with native descriptor wallets. Uh, but first, in order to understand why we need to rethink the wallet architecture, uh, i got to understand what the current wallet does, or what it did before, I guess. Um, so what's the old wallet architecture, at least in Bitcoin Core? Well, we have a thing what I call the bag of keys model. The wallet just has a bunch of keys and it does a bunch of things with those keys. Um, everything's centered around those keys and a lot of wallets actually follow the same thing, just with a little bit of variation of what they produce with those keys. And what we do with those keys is that we take a key uh, and we convert them into addresses and script pub keys. So you take a key, and wrap some script around it to make a like P2, PKH script pub key, make that an address and hand it to the user. This is what we do right now. But the problem with this is that, um, well, besides one key having multiple addresses, is that it's not very expensive. We can't use a single key to make multisigs. We can't give out multisig addresses. And we can't give out addresses that correspond to arbitrary scripts that do that weird contract thing that you really want to do. Um, so the way that we're going to solve this is by using the, the descriptor wallets. Uh, and to do that, we need to redesign the wallet architecture. So first, what are the native descriptor wallets? Well, as the name suggests, they store descriptors. Uh, what are descriptors? I'll get to that in a minute or two. And the thing with native descriptor wallets is that they can store any kind of descriptor, including you know, our multi-sig descriptors, or in the future, mini-script. So uh, with native descriptor wallets, we can have a wallet that hands out addresses for multi-sigs, for arbitrary scripts, basically whatever you want, without the wallet software having to hard code in uh, what to do with keys or what, to, what kind of scripts to produce. Uh, we also use a specific type of descriptor called a range descriptor that lets us generate multiple things from a single descriptor. So let's now talk about output descriptors themselves. Uh, output script descriptors are named as they suggest. They describe output scripts. Um, but they also describe output scripts along with everything that you need in order to solve them. Now, solving is a thing that's kind of specific to core, uh, or as a term that we define in core. And it means that if we have valid signatures, or if we have the private keys uh, related to a script, we can produce a valid input script sig. So this means that we have uh, all the redeem scripts and all the witness scripts that we need in order to produce that script sig. And the output script descriptor will tell us all of this information, not just what that output script is. Output script descriptors are also engineer readable, uh, slightly less readable than human readable because your average user probably won't be able to read them. But if you understand Bitcoin terminology, uh, the descriptor will actually tell you everything you need, need to know. And if you really want to dive deep into the specific details about descriptors, there's a document in the Bitcoin Core repo that you can go look at. And that actually explains everything in far more detail. So these are some descriptors. Um, they may look very confusing. It may be a little hard to see. Uh, but if you look closely, at the beginning of each one, we've got things here that are human readable, like PK or PKH and WPKH. For those of you that know Bitcoin terminology, you might uh, notice that those stand for public key or public key hash and witness public key hash, similar to P2PK and P2PKH. We just drop the P2 part because that's extra noise. So really a descriptor is a function. We have uh, a function name, and the descriptor function returns a script and it just takes some arguments like you would in any programming language like C or Python. The arguments can vary. Some of them take public keys, some of them take scripts, some of them take multiple public keys, whatever. Uh, let's go into a bit of detail on one of these descriptors. This is a very simple descriptor. Um, and at the beginning you see it says PKH. So this stands for pubkey hash. It's just the function name, it returns, and this tells you that it returns a pubkey hash script. 
The argument to this is a public key, just a public key, nothing special about it. And at the end, we have a checksum. So this checksum at the end is based on BESH32. So that means that there's, uh, there's some error detection and error correction in case for some reason you are typing these in by hand, although I'm not sure why you would want to do that. Um, and from this descriptor, we actually know, we now know the script pub key, it's that thing, and we know the address, which is up there as well. Uh, these are actually correct, I did compute them. And, but besides just knowing this output script, we also know what we need in order to produce that valid signature. We need to have that pub key and we need to have the private key for that pub key. If we, uh, because we know that we have that pub key, it's solvable. So here's a slightly more complicated example, and this kind of descriptor is actually what we will be including in our wallet. So this, like the previous example, is pkh, but you'll notice that the public key argument is far longer and far more complicated. First we got this square bracket thing, and this is for key origin information. Uh, I'll get into that a little bit later. Then we've got an xpub, which I'm sure many of you are familiar with, and then we have a thing at the end that is actually uh, some derivation information, and of course, the checksum. So what's this key origin information in our square brackets? Well, it actually, it's uh, based on uh, derivation path. It looks very familiar to one. But instead of the M at the beginning, like you would see in a derivation path, we have this thing called the fingerprint. And the fingerprint is just the first four bytes of the hash 160 of the master public key. Uh, so in this example, it's D3, 4D, B33, F. Um, and that tells, that's just an identifier of the master public key. After that is the rest of the derivation path. So this is 44 prime, zero prime, zero prime. And what this tells us is that this xpub is derived from a master public key uh, with the fingerprint D34D B33F at the derivation path m slash 44 prime slash zero prime slash zero prime. Uh, after our xpub is more derivation information and this is telling us where to derive more, more keys at. So what this descriptor is telling us is that we have, even though we've given it a single key, we can actually produce a ton more keys from it and therefore many, many script pub keys from it. So at the, the resulting scripts that we get will have uh, public keys derived from D340, B33F at m slash 44 prime slash zero prime slash zero prime slash one slash i. Uh, which, if you're familiar with BIP44, is a standard BIP44 derivation path. And we call these ranged descriptors. Now, the astute among you might have noticed that this only produces one kind of script pub key. It only produces PKH. And it also only produces uh, keys at a specific derivation chain. You know, this uh, does not cover your change addresses. And if you wanted to segue, you can't do it with this particular descriptor. So in our descriptor wallets, uh, we did the lazy approach and we just have six of them. So there are uh, one, there's uh, one for each address type. So there's one PKH, one SHWPKH, and one WPKH. And then one of each of those three for change and receiving addresses. Uh, but the cool thing here is that we don't, we're not limited to just these six, uh, these three kinds of descriptors. You can replace, say, that WPKH1 with WSH multi if you wanted to have BESH32 multi-sig addresses. And that's one of the cool things about descriptor wallets. Uh, they're expandable. We can just swap out one of the descriptors with a different one, and we can still get addresses for that. And the wallet itself doesn't really need to know uh, how to sign for that uh, multi-sig that you put in there because the descriptor tells you how to sign for it. But another thing about descriptor wallets is that those descriptors are completely unambiguous as to the derivation paths you're using and what kind of address you're producing. So this means that if you wanted to import a descriptor to another wallet, you don't have to guess about what derivation path it's going to use, and you don't have to guess about what kind of address it's going to use. The descriptor tells you right there exactly what it's going to produce. So that means we can get rid of walletsrecovery.org, rip its short life. <laughs> uh, that makes backups easier. We've got everything we need in one single string, or I guess a couple strings that you can slap together. And uh, that checksum also makes them portable in case 
you decided to type them in by hand for some reason. So how are we getting descriptive wallets in Bitcoin Core? Where's my timer? Uh, in Bitcoin Core, we still have this, have this bag of keys model, and the way that's implemented is very tied in with the wallet. There, it's uh, hard to separate it out. So for the past several months, I've been working on a project within Core to first abstract some parts of the wallet. And specifically, we've been abstracting out this key and script pub key management into uh, a very obviously named script pub key manager. <laughs> so uh, this abstraction just means that we take all the keys and the way that the script pub keys are produced and we kind of shove it into its own box where uh, it can do its own thing and where we can actually change how the script pub keys are being produced. Because really, what the wallet cares about are the script pub keys, not the keys themselves. The keys are just kind of extra data that are related to the script pub keys. So what this model means is that we are moving away from the, uh, you know, take a key and make something, make a script out of it, and we're changing to here's a script what do we need in order to sign for it? So uh, with this refactor, our main wallet class, C wallet, will just contain script pub key managers and it will ask script pub key managers for new script pub keys. And when it needs to sign a transaction, it just hands it off to the script pub key manager and that figures out what needs to be done in order to sign for the script pub keys. So this means, of course, we can change out what's inside Obviously, we've got the old thing that we do uh, in shoved into its own thing that we call the legacy script pub key manager, because it's legacy code. And we've got a new thing for output script descriptors. We will have an output script pub key manager, or descriptor script pub key manager, and this descriptor script pub key manager will use our descriptors to produce script pub keys. And our descriptors tell us how to sign, so that's how the script pub key manager knows how to sign for everything. Uh, if you're interested in some more nitty-gritty details, there is a document on the Bitcoin Core developer wiki that no one realizes exists. So where are we at now with getting all of this into Core? Well, uh, as far as I know, Core, uh, no wallet actually uses descriptors yet, which is a shame. Core is getting there slowly, but it takes a lot of work. Um, I think a few other wallets also have it in their roadmap, but so far no one uses descriptors yet. Uh, but in core, we've uh, done this refactor, so actually we're getting pretty close. The refactor into C Wallet and that script pub key manager thing was merged last week after I had written these slides. Um, but hey, it got merged. And uh, there's an open PR that introduces our descriptor script pub key manager. So that will be merged hopefully in a few months. So maybe by the end of this year, we'll have descriptor wallets. And even though this seems like it's the closest thing, uh, the closest to script pub key, uh, descriptor walls that we are yet in the Bitcoin space. I'm hoping that maybe someone else will, you know, also catch up and get to this before we do in core. But at the very least, uh, descriptor wallets and our whole refactor will at least make core into a more modern wallet and catch up to uh, catch up to where we at, where every other wallet is at now and will also allow us to move forward faster in the future. So, any questions? I do appreciate that this engineer readable, but I was wondering if you thought about uh, providing also the batch 32 encoding or the coding for moving from one wallet to the other. I mean, it could be easier to code into a QR code or to move around and uh, of course will be to make it readable you will have to decode or w will that make sense to encode the old descriptor as batch 32 address? Um, I don't think, well so there have been some discussion about encoding it in some way but as specifically batch 32 uh, I don't think it would make sense there because uh, Bash 32 is not optimized for this kind of string. Uh, that's why we do have a, a checksum at the end of it, though. Uh, that is based on Bash 32, and that checksum is optimized for descriptors themselves. So there was a suggestion to actually just 
base64 encode the entire descriptor uh, and call it some magic string and hand it off to users if they wanted to import them. Um, in, within HD wallets, uh, in the relevant bits, there's a described a look ahead of 20 keys. So when a wallet is trying to rebuild the structure, um, after it's found that many keys without any cache in them, it will give up. Is there something more intelligent that descriptors can add to that? Uh, nope. Yeah, uh, so, in, um, so in BTC Pay, basically when I started it, the concept of output descriptor were not existing, so I wrote my own uh, that I call derivation scheme. And I, I'm considering like trying to move away from this and more into this output descriptor language. Uh, but the main, uh, the main issue I, I have with it is that because it's not still merged and not lots of people rely on it, it means that if I do it now, there is lots of chance that the language evolve. And if it evolves, then it might break my stuff pretty badly. So basically, that's the whole reason why I'm not, I'm not going into this boat yet. So I'm, I'm asking to you, do you think that right now it's stable enough that you're pretty sure that it won't move and break soon? So everything that's currently implemented is extremely unlikely to change, even though there's no BIP for it or anything. Uh, whatever exists now, like the examples I showed, uh, they're probably not going to change at all. But descriptors will be improved. There will be things added to it, like Miniscript. Uh, there will be more functions added, but uh, as the things that they are now are not going to change. I'm just curious, uh, why is there no hash of the chain code in the XPub? The XPub pub has key? A, well, the XPub includes a chain code. Oh, okay. So you beat the hash of the pub key. That's the, just for verifying or double checking? So the fingerprint thing, I was talking about uh, the hash of the pub key, that's just there for an identifier. Um, that's particularly useful in PSBTs because a PSBT has to contain the fingerprint of the master public key to identify the signer. Uh, and we just kind of tack that onto descriptors because it's useful. All right, I think that's it. So if anyone else has questions, you can come find me afterwards. I'm hanging around. <laughs> Great, thank you. Okay. Thank you.